When people think of Australian history, the first things they think about is usually drinking and sitting around doing nothing. But what they're forgetting is that in between all the drinking and sitting around doing nothing, there was a whole bunch of crime. And that makes sense because most of us are only here because our ancestors were criminals. But there is a little bit more to just drinking, sitting around doing nothing and crime when it comes to Australian history. Because surprisingly, we actually have made some contributions to society. For example, Wi-Fi was an Australian invention, which explains why we have some of the worst Wi-Fi in the entire world. But Wi-Fi is nothing when we compare it to some of the other things us Australians have accomplished. So now it's time for me to shut up, because this video isn't about what we've invented. Instead, we'll be looking at some of the greatest moments in Australian history that changed the world and put Australia on the map. First up, we have a true Australian classic, and that is the fondling of Cecil George Edwards. Get your hand off my penis! Now, most of you will know this iconic moment in Australian history under one of these two names. Whether it's succulent Chinese meal or democracy manifest, every Australian citizen knows this story. Cecil George Edwards, pictured here, was enjoying a succulent Chinese meal when he was wrongfully arrested. Now, there's two theories as to why he was arrested. This first theory is one that I came up with myself, and that is that he is guilty of the crime of having three first names. Therefore, he was arrested mid-feed, and was only released when the cop holding his ID moved his thumb, revealing the S in the last name Edwards. And the second, more commonly known theory is that Cecil George Edwards looked like a criminal that they were actively hunting down. But the reason for his arrest isn't the part that we're interested in. We're more interested in the news report which filmed his arrest. You see, never before and not once since has anyone ever come up with this many great one-liners in the space of two minutes. The one-liners in question being... What is the charge? Eating a meal? A succulent Chinese meal? Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. And of course, a personal favourite of mine, and one that I still quote till this day... Get your hand off my penis! But now, we're going to move on to what is arguably the greatest moment in the history of the entire world, let alone Australia, and that of course is the launch of the AU Falcon. On a perfectly sunny day in September of 1998, the world changed forever. The world as we knew it was flipped on its head the day that the AU Falcon Series 1 Forte with Waterfall Grill was put on sale to the public. The word car as we knew it had been completely redefined. For that one day in September of 1998, the whole world stopped to admire what Ford Australia had just pulled off. With a 4-litre inline-six engine, pushing out more power than a modern-day 4.5-litre turbocharged V8, on that day, the whole world knew that the game had just changed. The AU Falcon was so popular that in the four years that they were on sale, they sold 10 million times 0 0.0237. Now, before we get into the next historical moment, I need a few seconds to catch my breath. All right, I'm back. Now the next historical moment that we're gonna get into is the Tony Abbott onion incident. During his time as Prime Minister, Tony Abbott was in Tasmania for some reason. But while he was there, he took a tour of an onion farm, and when he was handed an onion, little did he know what he was about to do next would make history. Tony Abbott, just as any other sane human would do, held that onion to his mouth and took a bite. He continued by holding back the tears and finishing the mouthful, and then gave the universal nod of Hey, that's pretty good. But while we're on the topic of Prime Ministers, we'll have to get into Scott Morrison's double whammy. In 1997, the Cronulla Sharks lost the Super League Grand Final. But what happened after is way more important. After their defeat, Scott Morrison made his way into Engadine McDonald's where he proceeded to shit his pants. This rumour has been floating around for quite some time, and Scott Morrison himself, to this day, refuses that it ever happened. We heard a rumour, and I've been asked to ask you this, so you addressed it at the midwinter ball, but there were Engadine, after Brisbane beat you in the Super League Grand Final in 97, 
There's a rumour at the Mang- Angadine McDonald's. How do you respond to that rumour? Well, of course it's rubbish. I mean, it's one of those, uh, one of those urban myths. But as written here on page 139 in the Book of Yorick, it does state that in 1997, after the Cronulla Sharks lost the Super League Grand Final, Scott Morrison did in fact shit his pants. But that's enough about the Inga Dean McDonald's shart of 1997. Because more recently, Scott Morrison was in the headlines once again for something just as stupid. The first thing that comes to mind might be that one time that he left the country while half the country was on fire to go on a holiday to Hawaii. Then, when the backlash was too much for him, came back and tried to act like all is well. But while that is stupid, what you're about to see next is even stupider. And that is the Scott Morrison safety squints incident of 2022. While trying his hand at welding a diff, Scott Morrison decided to turn his welding mask into a hard hat and deploy the ultimate Australian PPE technique. The safety squints. And the cherry on top has to be this YouTube comment on the re-upload of the news report where the safety squint took place, saying that his ability to weld is as good as his ability to run the country. Now this next one I've already covered in another video, and that is just waiting for a mate. This iconic moment in Australian history took place on live TV on Australia's greatest TV show, Highway Patrol, which I've already done a video on. So I'll just keep this short and sharp since I've already covered it in that video. But basically what happened was this cop got a phone call that someone was ripping skids and crashed their car in a car park in Carrum Downs, a suburb to the southeast of Melbourne. But when the police officer came to the window of the visibly intoxicated man behind the wheel and asked him what going on, he accidentally coined one of Australia's greatest one-liners of all time, just waiting for a mate. If you ask anyone in Australia, what are you doing, 90% of the time, the answer you will receive is, I'm waiting for a mate. And that's what makes this moment one of the greatest in all of Australia's history. Now this next one has got to be another personal favourite of mine, and that is when Willem Powerfish backed his Ford Falcon towing a luxury yacht into the Tweed River. The fact that he sunk a car and boat to the bottom of the Tweed River isn't important, because come on, we've all done that before. The most important part about this story is the fact that they tried to fine him one million dollars and sent him to jail for seven years. But my favourite part about this whole story is even though they tried to fine him a million dollars and send him to jail for seven years, he only ended up with a $15,000 fine and was sentenced to 100 hours of knitting beanies. And in celebration of this massive win in the court, He went down to the local beach, stripped off his gear, threw a chook into the ocean, and went for a dip. But while we're on the topic of going for a dip in the ocean, we'll get into another great moment in Australian history, and that is Australia's most inappropriate swimming pool. On the 17th of December 1967, the current Prime Minister of Australia, Harold Holt, went for a dip in the Port Sea Beach. And unfortunately, due to rough conditions, he disappeared and was never seen again. The search for Harold Holt was named as one of the largest search operations in history, only comparable to that one time I lost the keys to the AU Falcon. As you know, Harold Holt was never found. But to pay respect, they decided to name something after him. And of course, the most logical choice would be to put his name on a swimming pool. And that's exactly what they did. And in 2003, the diving board at the Harold Holt Swim Centre was shut down due to safety concerns. I mean, you wouldn't want anyone drowning, right? Now to finish off this video, I'm going to show you one of my all-time favourite moments in Australian history, and that is the Who's Got Tobacco incident of 2018. Now I'm pretty sure this incident took place at the bus bays at Frankston Station. On one fateful day in the summer of 2018, a sharply dressed man wearing a leather jacket, fluoro board shorts and a crisp set of cockroach squashes made his way down the road outside of Frankston train station and made history. He began by warning fellow commuters that they were not safe. You're not safe right now! You're not safe! He then proceeded to politely ask for a cigarette. Give me a cigarette! When that failed, he broadened his search to just tobacco in general. Who's got tobacco? Who's got tobacco? He was then met with a smart-ass comment from the man behind the camera. 
He then responded by doing that thing bulls do when they're about to charge and walked off into the sunset. And we can only assume that a few minutes later, a 7-Eleven worker earning minimum wage was blessed with his presence. And with that, it's time to end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment and share if you'd like to hear more teachings from the prophet of your ak hunt and if you enjoyed this video so much that you stuck around right till the end comment succulent chinese meal to let me know and as always a shout out to all the people who made a donation to the charity of my bank account i've already spent it all on legal fees for driving my car into the yarra river and also don't forget to check out the website and get dripped out like this guy